Dr. Sage here, back with the third out of four videos about the cell cycle and mitosis. In the last video, we learned about the process of mitosis, which is how eukaryotic somatic cells do cell division. Okay, well today we're going to learn about the process of cytokinesis, which is how the cell actually splits into two separate cells, and also about binary fission, which is how bacteria or prokaryotes do cell division. So let's jump in with cytokinesis. So one thing to note about cytokinesis is that it happens differently in animal cells versus plant cells, which if you think about that, it makes sense because between two plant cells, you have a plant cell wall, but you don't have a plant cell wall between two animal cells. Okay, so let's start with animal cell cytokinesis. During telophase of mitosis, what happens is you have one animal cell that has two nuclei inside it. Okay, this animal cell is gonna need to split down the middle to become two separate animal cells. How that happens is in the middle of the cell, a contractile ring forms. Okay, that contractile ring is built out of actin microfilaments. Okay, so recall in an earlier lecture, we learned about the cell cytoskeleton made out of three types of fibers, tubular microtubules, actin microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Okay, well for this chapter, we need to remember or relearn about two of those types of cytoskeleton. One of them we talked about in the last lecture, that's the tubulin microtubules. Tubular microtubules are responsible for moving or separating the chromosomes during cell division. Well, in this lecture, we're talking about actin microfilaments. So actin microfilaments create this contractile ring, which contracts. So imagine this is a cell here. The cell is going to start contracting in the middle, do that contractile ring, creating this groove here called the cleavage furrow. And it's going to keep contracting until it actually pinches the cell into two separate cells. Okay, that's how animal cells do cytokinesis. Plants are different. In plants, it doesn't pinch in. Okay, instead what happens is the plant, its Golgi apparatus makes vesicles, okay, which are little membrane spheres. And it sends those vesicles down to the middle of the cell. Those vesicles start to fuse together and create what's called the cell plate. Okay, well, those vesicles are made out of a membrane. The cell plate is made out of a membrane. Okay, well the cell plate keeps fusing together until it fuses all the way to the edge of the cell where the plasma membrane is. And the membrane of that cell plate becomes the new plasma membrane of those now two plant cells. But recall, besides having a plasma membrane, the plant cells also need a cell wall outside of that plasma membrane. Okay, like this shown in red. The membrane of the vesicles, I'm gonna draw them in blue, becomes a membrane of the cell plate, which becomes a new plasma membrane of these two plant cells. But it turns out those vesicles coming from the Golgi apparatus, they weren't empty. Inside the vesicles are the components or the pieces to build the plant cell wall. So when the cell plate forms, it starts building the plant cell wall inside. Okay, so the membrane of the cell plate becomes a new plasma membrane. The contents, what's inside the cell plate, becomes a new plant cell wall between those two plant cells. So that's how plants do cytokinesis. But what about prokaryotes or bacteria? Okay, they don't do mitosis. So if you have one bacteria, okay, one bacteria is only one cell bit. It's a unicellular organism. So if that one bacteria cell does cell division, what it's doing is it's doing reproduction. Because you had one bacteria, now you have two bacteria. So bacteria or prokaryotes do cell division for reproduction. The way they do cell division is not through mitosis. Instead, it's through a process called binary fission. Okay, so we have one bacteria cell here. Turns out bacteria have one chromosome and has a circular chromosome. So if you have a circular chromosome, what you really want is you want one place to start copying that chromosome. And then you can just go around the chromosome and make one copy of it. Okay, you don't want to start somewhere on the chromosome and only go part way around and like lose half of your genes. You also don't want to start somewhere in the chromosome and go around multiple times and make multiple copies of those genes. 
So you want is you want a place you can start copying that chromosome and then just start going around that circular chromosome until you've copied the entire thing. Okay, so there is a place where you start copying the chromosome. It's called the origin of replication, or it can be called an oricyte for short. So bacteria chromosomes have one origin of replication. That's where you first start copying the DNA, the chromosome. So what's going to happen is the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have two copies of that origin of replication because you started copying it. Then you're going to start going around this circular chromosome, copying the DNA. You keep going around the chromosome, copying the DNA, until in the end you have two copies of that chromosome. Now at the same time that you're going around the chromosome, copying the DNA, those now two origins of replication they're going to start moving to two opposite sides of the cell. You can see one origin of replication is going this way. The other origin of replication is going this way. Okay, so you keep copying the chromosome, the origin of replication, therefore the chromosomes keep moving to two opposite sides of the cell. Okay, then the cell starts to pinch in the middle to split the cell into two separate cells. Okay, and that's just the details we're going to learn about binary fission for Bio 1. To learn more details about binary fission, take microbiology. And they'll teach you a lot more details, like some of the details that are presented in this figure. Bacteria or prokaryotes have one small circular chromosome with one origin of replication. You start copying the DNA of the origin of replication first, keep going around the chromosome until you've copied the entire chromosome. You now have two copies of that chromosome. The two origins of replication are moving into two opposite sides of the cell. The cell pinches in the middle to become two separate cells. That's binary fission. That's how prokaryotes or bacteria do cell division. That's also how they do reproduction. So that was a brief lecture on cytokinesis and binary fission. In the next and last lecture in this series, we're going to talk about how back to eukaryotic cells, we regulate our cell cycle, how we control when the cell cycle happens versus when it doesn't happen when you're doing cell division versus when you're not doing cell division. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.